such that you don't, you can't pay attention to the farm work well, that you need to do. Uh -huh. um, and will you remain, uh, will you be able to tend your crops throughout the year? Uh -huh. You know, but uh, certainly if a uh, snake were to come out at you, you would be able to respond right. very quickly. Uh -huh. Okay, let's look at the scope of it, um, you know, this disorder in Ghana. Do we have any statistics um, at the moment, especially in children who get diagnosed? Do we have any? Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. Not that I know of. Um, I don't think that there's, there's, uh, there are wide, such wide differences except by the criteria that we use. Okay. So um, if we decided, if we, we're supposed to be using the ICD-10 criteria. What's the ICD-10? The International Classification of okay. Diseases, because the WHO, we're part of the WHO and we use those. Um, but I think whether a child is diagnosed or not depends on the teacher. Because mm -mm, they need to pick it up usually. What about parents? Yes. Like, how can maybe parents and teachers, because some teachers maybe are not even aware of this term. It seems like it's a term that's kind of filtered down from abroad the last few years. How can teachers spot, you know, Which, and parents? Well, it, it is a function of teacher training mm -hmm. that you should know when a child is out of the norm so that you can get help. Um, it's, it is, though, sometimes an issue of pride by both parents and teachers that they cannot ask for help and cannot allow uh, um, somebody trained to do this to be with them. Because if you have 40 children or 38 in a class, for example, and one or two of them are bouncing off the wall, it can really, um, it can really destroy your planning and your, mm -hmm. you know, and teaching and the other children's ability to work. So a, ch a, a, a teacher needs extra help in the classroom. In the classroom if they have a child like that. And a parent needs extra help. But sometimes parents think that if they, they speak up, then it means they're bad parents because they can't ah. control their children. But the, the other side of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is being able, it, it, is knowing that normal parenting will not do it and it's not your fault. So you need extra help. Both parent and child need extra help to be able to construct that very structured environment that the child will thrive in. Oh. So they, they sit quietly in class and rate the child's behavior every every five minutes okay. or something on a number of, uh, of obse observed uh, things like um, a child gets up or, um, when others are sitting or a child interrupts the teacher uh, or a child is looking around when everybody else is working or a child is not able to settle down to start work or a child does not complete mm -hmm. work um, and so forth. You know, there's all of these things you look at. And then you say that, okay. But, and then you have a, a few checklists that you give to the teachers. So there's the child behavior checklist. There's the, what we call the SNAP. These are very good old measures. Mm -hmm. And the, the teachers just, it's a checklist for the teachers. The, ch uh, the child um, then sits still, looks around, mm -hmm. you know, all of those things. The child does, gets into trouble, blah, blah, blah. You score them. And if they go over a criterion, you say, they have ADHD and it, they might also score high on anxiety or sleep-related problems and the parents do do the same. And then you, you compare the parents' results with other parents, the teachers' results with other te uh, teachers mm -hmm. and your observations and you reach a diagnosis because they've crossed the criteria. See, what I'm thinking is in almost every school in this country and pretty much almost in the world, there's always one or two kids who are going to be a bit unruly, who are going to be the ones that's always maybe talkatives, or I was, I was a talkative, um, for whatever reason. In that, with, with, with that aside, does that mean that we have more? Because as a grown up, we didn't have these, uh, you know, this, this term is pretty much, pr is pretty new in, in this part of the world. So with the fact that in every class, you're going to get somebody like that, does that mean that we have more um, kids with ADHD or just children just being naughty? Um... Because perhaps they're not all of them will ever get get diagnosed. 
Yeah. You're right. I think that if the child's learning, like I always say, it's a it's functional learning. thing. Okay. It's a functional thing. If a teacher can't deal with you, if your classmates don't want to be near you, mm. if you're disturbing others, and if you yourself can't learn, it's a problem. But in Ghana, most people, because of the structure, because of the discipline they in our schools... They end up on the streets. Okay. That's what they do. In Ghana? Yes, because school becomes frustrating for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not their fault that they can't sit still enough to learn. But if you're, you know, slowly migrating to the bottom of the class and people <laughs> begin to laugh at you and you're getting into trouble with your teachers all the time, you're not going to be happy. It's not... Uh, you, the child, are not going to be happy. It's, a, it's something that ought to be, to be noted and dealt with. Okay, we're almost out of time on this, but um, treatment. Um, what is um, the treatment options for uh, once, once a diagnosis has been made? Or, you know, what's the first step? Um, an easy step would be medication. Contrary to what you think, Children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder do well on stimulants. So they, their medication, the group of medications that is given them is, is stimulant. And so you would think that if you drank, if you took medicine to stimulate you, they'd go even more off the wall. Mm. But the reason they go off the wall is the hypothesis is that their brains can't see enough stimulation. So okay. they are so bored. They have to do this to... Have you ever tried to sleep when you couldn't sleep and you had to hate yourself to feel Try something? Try to count, count sheep or something. They, yeah. they, have to, they have to feel something because they can't, you know... If you take a hyperactive child to um, a place with a lot of music, loud music, and other, most children begin to feel anxious, a hyperactive child comes alive. With, okay. Because there's enough stimulation then. Mm. So if you put a hyperactive child in a boring classroom, it's the asleep. worst thing. They don't <laughs> fall asleep. Ah. Other children would. They don't. They crave stimulation because you've taken them way below what they should have. Mm -hmm. Their brains can't see low-level stimulation. When they get high-level <laughs> stimulation, they come alive. <laughs> so you stimulate them with medication. You stimulate them with activities that mm -hmm. can, you know, they, they come alive. So that's one thing you do. But if you, uh, many parents don't want the, the medication. medication because there are side, side effects. effects. That's what I was going to ask you. Yes, and there, but there are ways of managing it. Like you have drug holidays and the holidays, they don't have to be on it all the time. Okay. Or you give it to them only for school so they can settle down and study. When they come home, they can bounce off the walls. But then you have some very structured activities for them. Mm -hmm. So they know they have a timetable. When they come home, they do A, B, C, D, like sit down, do their homework for 10, 15 minutes. You structure short things for them, not long things, mm -hmm. but short, short things. Break the activity up with rewards. Um, let them, remind them about the rules that you make ahead of time. And if they follow the rules, you reward them. We, we, it's called a behavioral management um, uh, system that you put in place for them. So you see the things that... Um, you want to see them do more of and you reward them. And the things you don't want them to do, you put in a, it, it's not so much a punishing system, but you withdraw rewards from that okay. for them. It's a very structured approach. All right, because I'm just often thinking, I'm thinking about, you know, the typical Ghanaian environment, not just in the cities, but in the rural areas. A lot of times when people are failing in class or are not, you know, failing to concentrate, they'll just say, well, boom, you know, you're silly, exactly. you're, you're, you're stupid, you can't learn. Mm -hmm. So with, with this knowledge, do you, and uh, the fact that there's, there are kids failing, um, across the country. The kids and are failing across the country not because of attention deficit. Uh -huh, because of disorder. other differences. Because they're not teaching them. Okay. They're so not teaching them. So that's what them. I was going to say. The teachers are not in the classrooms. And there's and nobody also the, making the, the, sure the that they're there. And also the staff numbers. We know sometimes one, one and teacher... And classroom sizes are too huge. And so forth. So what I was going to ask is... And the textbooks is, are not there. 
that's a that's a different topic. <laughs> I don't want to build the topic. This is all part of it, and the teachers are not the teachers are not being motivated to mm-hmm. stay in class. This disorder and the fact that. A lot of times, at least we know, if you're not maybe privileged enough, because let's be honest, doctor, how many people are going to get the likes of yourself? Well, most doctors come and go to your rural classroom and wherever to go and monitor them. If, if we can issues. get this information into teacher training, mm-hmm. you know, then teachers teachers are wonderful people. They can be they can learn to manage their classrooms. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm not sure that teachers are being taught enough how to manage classrooms without the use of of physical punishment and and also it is insane to put a teacher in 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 a class of more than 30 children by or 40 children by herself mm. you know for for young children because and how can they manage exactly. all this exactly okay that's so one thing that one can do with 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 that is to bring in assistance you know, like uh, SS cho- SSS or even JSS graduates, one can teach a JSS graduate to sit Assist. next to, as J- even a JSS graduate, mm. or to sit with good people skills, to sit next to a child with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and help them through their classwork. That's a, the simplest kind of intervention one can have okay. for a, a child like that. All right. We're out of time on this. This is a topic I'd like to at least revisit again because I feel like, yes, if it is there, um, just getting it managed. So maybe we'll do another topic on just, you know, treating it and maybe giving some parents some tips in how to recognize this because, you know, and our teachers as well. So I want to say thank you to Dr. Angela Ferriata from the University of Ghana Medical School. This has been our lifestyle um, segment proudly brought to you by Lipton Tea, inspiration flowing from nature. Don't go anywhere. We have entertainment coming up next.